In this video, I'm very excited to start automatic operation implementation. And we start with adder. Okay, in the past videos, we learned about binary systems, decimal, hexadecimal, conversion between them. Then we also learned how to add numbers, how to subtract numbers. In subtraction, we introduced concept of tools complement. So now we need to create circuit to do the addition first so agenda for for this uh, video is um, we will look into half adder and full adder full adder there can be a different implementation and we will look into i believe in today's video we will look into carry propagate adder how we implement that, what are the shortcomings of that, and then how do we address the shortcomings in Ripple, sorry, and carry look ahead adder. Okay, so there's a three implementations of carry propagate adder, Ripple carry, carry look ahead, and prefix adder. So we will look into all these, but in this video, I believe we will only cover, cover this part. Let's start with half adder. Okay, half adder assumes there are two inputs single bit and there are two outputs sum and carry out there's no carry in so we are adding only two inputs two inputs can be zero zero a can be zero b can be one a can be one b can be zero a one b one as you already know from previous video that when we add 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 1 binary, 1, 0, 1 binary, 1, 1. In binary, it's 1, 0, which is equivalent to decimal 2. In all these cases, which is 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, we have sum is 0 and 1, 1, and there is no carry. Only in this scenario, sum is 0 and there is a carry out one which is on this place how we implement how we create a, a combination circuit for for sum and carry look at the this truth table back to the same combination truth table that we studied before look at under under sum where we have one and one is if you look at zero one one zero is one else is zero here's a very good practical example of an exclusive R gate if you remember this is really s is an exclusive R gate between a and b our symbol is this look at c0 whenever one of the input is 0 output is 0 and c0 is 1 when both inputs are 1 here is another practical example of an AND gate C O C carry out is one only when A and B are one. So by implementing this circuit, exclusive R between A B and then N between A B, we are we we can calculate the sum of two bounded numbers. So that's our half adder. As I said, full adder will have not only A and B, it will have a third input, which is carry in. What if we are creating a more generic adder now? Okay, this half adder is going to work uh, when it's, uh, where am I? Yeah, when it's really the first day, right? The, there is nothing there. Uh, but if we are adding multiple bits, then maybe the first bit over here, for example, doesn't have any care. Okay, I think it's, it's good to you're hearing dogs barking in my background because I'm sitting in Pakistan on the roof okay here so if we have let's say so if we are adding the very first one okay then we don't need any input carry so 1 and 1, 0, and then carry goes to 1. The next adder we need to have, oops, what happened this? Oh, anyway, you got it. 
learn my point and that is for this one we need a three bit adder similarly for each other state we need a three bit adder so ideally if we can make a three bit adder we can use it even for the first one all we have to do is make the input carry zero half is not gonna work here half it was good for you to get a concept or if it's only one bit now for, for this one this is the same one and now we have only two input in this case we have um, three input a b c um, then s and sum and the carry output so now we have three bits and the combination is these are all unique eight combination basically if you look at in, in two groups you have a and b just like half header with input carry zero and the same a b combination with carry input one those are all the possible scenario with three inputs and let's do it when it's zero 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 we add three input zero answer is sum is zero carry out is zero we add these three sum is one carry out to zero we add these three sum is one carry out to zero we add these three sum is zero carry out is one you understand that now this three bit same thing same thing same thing let's this a new scenario over here that we didn't see in this uh, the three ones when you add them one 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 so in decimal is three when it's binary the equivalent of three is one one sum is one carry out is one so what do we do put one one here and this is our circle let's look at that previously we were able to have sum as exclusive r of uh, x r of a and b and c0 was an and gate only just one and gate but let's see what happens for three bit three scenario three bits input if you look at sum, um, so if you look at, oh, let's look, observe one is only when all, when there are odd number of ones on the inputs, A, B, and C, I. Here, same odd, then this is one odd number of ones, this is one odd number of ones for any other evens number of ones it's it's zero so cool it looks like sum is still exclusive r in this time a and b and c i okay so what we have here is i don't i didn't do that okay and this one and this one This is the circuit for three bits sum. And for C O and the C O, we I do this K map. So look at this. Um, C out is one, one, one. There's no pattern like exclusive R A B and C. So we what we do is I put A B C I and their different values and put mark wherever ones are in this table and the one zeros are left empty. Then I created rectangles around them. So this one, this two, and this three. If you remember K-map, so let's create an expression for this. Here, C changes, so we discard C, and A and B are constants, and those are A, B, so this is the first term. For this guy, C stays constant as 1 and then A changes but B stays constant so this is B C I and this last one A C I so 3 and are together which is R so you have so A B it's a good circuit for actually to revise the combination basics that we did earlier on. Alright, let's go. 
Now let's say we have we have an n bit adder now. So far we study is a single bit full adder. This one has n bits. A is n bits, B is n bits. Therefore, S is n bits. But carry in and carry outside one bit each. So look at let's look into different implementation of this. Now how we can expand that single bit full adder to come up with for a lot of bits together so if we look at this we are here I've drawn single bit full adder but bit 0 or bit 1 bit and so this is like this this if, if hopefully I'm not confusing you this scenario when we have let's say n is equal to 5 so then this is the scenario Let's say these are the two number that I'm adding. So this one is first zero bit one here, bit two is somewhere here, bit three total are five. One two three. We start with zero one two three four. So um, n is four actually in this one. And is four. So we have four, three. Okay, only one bin between one and zero. Just to give you a, a real number. But sometimes some people get confused when there is n and wall. But it's it's the same idea. N minus one is three. So when we have a scenario like this, let me just take out. Now what happens, let's say we are adding this 4 bit numbers. So what happened, this for first one, the input is 0, so we try this to 0. It uh, adds a sum immediately from A to A. Imagine we have these exclusive R inside for sum. These are exclusive R, they are connected A and B. And for a carry out, this is the logic R and this N gate and gate this comes this come and this come so let's say we are going through it so we need to create a C out here now whenever a1 and b1 s1 is available immediately because a1 are there but for C this one you need to calculate what was the carry out from the previous one based on input in this case 0 0 carry out is 0 but we don't know what it is so we are making a generic structure so zero zero then it's connect hope I'm, I'm what i'm explaining makes sense since people are not in front of me sometimes it's very difficult to to get that feeling that people are nodding their head or they're saying yes or no and so explaining this way is easy because nobody is sitting in front of, but it, that's the same thing also makes us difficult so what you do carry out goes here then here and here and then we're here but one thing that you notice and the reason why i have this thing here i will look into delays of combinatorial circuits in later on so i will do several videos on timing and that is a really really important topic but right now understand that ideally whenever a oh sorry ideally here let's look into here Early whenever there is A, B here inputs, we should immediately get C0. But you know that these gates, there is no magic inside. There are electronic systems inside. There are transistors here. Inside the transistor, there are electrons that are flowing. Electrons are not abrupt. And the path of electron is not ideal. There is always some sort of resistance within the channel of transistor. Then there is a resistance as well as capacitance um, inside the transistor as well as on these wires that connect different gates. We will look into what the, what are the sources of those resistances and capacitances. But for now, think of that. That electron flow is not ideal. It takes some time. 
and that time is called delay so when inputs move to outputs through this there is a delay now think of that delay there's a delay from a b c to output as well there are two gates a and b is always delay here c immediately available here but c needs to wait for a little bit for a and b to uh, come out of this gate and then this section happens so the path critical path when this output is stable is actually when these two inputs go through here and here now think of that delay concept inside here and it's good that we're building this circuit on combinational circuit the, in, in the combinational area it, it's, it's help us going to the next level of problems and challenges not just functionality of it but there is a delay that's another factor that you need to consider later on we'll look into power as well now in adders okay, think of the, this the symbol I made inside this is the circuit Whenever A0, B0, let's look at this one. This is a critical one. Whenever A4, B4 available. So this gate, the result is available immediately. But C, what's happening? It's coming from the input. And this one needs to wait to calculate from here. This one needs to calculate from here. So your critical delay is really this one until carry really propagates all the way here we cannot see that okay the output is really valid so for this output or in the case the whole sum to be valid we need to wait for the carry to really go through all this imagine a 32 bit adder in a 32 bit microprocessor with 32 instruction as uh, the registers are in 32 bit long that is 32 bit in memory okay there are 32 bit long 32 bits adders an adder is part of the arithmetic arithmetic logic unit the critical piece involved in many instruction they are in um, arithmetic is involved so it takes time delay delay in the adder means delay in executing an instruction if there is a delay in executing instruction that means there is a delay in executing that program delay of the program can mean that you cannot run that application in real time it takes much longer maybe it's not even an option in a particular application so with these things in mind you can see that this is an option but this is a slower version. If you want to really run your um, core, ALU, or your adder at a high speed, you need to look at some other techniques. Architecturally, how I can calculate this carry propagation or generation quicker. And that's where this carry look ahead, next option of limitation of full adder comes into action. I think we stop this video here and we will look into carry look ahead in the next video. Take care of yourself. See you next time.